Hello, hello, um, and this is the Christmas story, chapter two. Um, we're going to read a part of chapter two and do it by parts, okay? Uh, so chapter two. The more I think it's, the, it's over, ah, the more I feel that there is nothing truly artistic than to love people. It's in the end, really bad. Dor Doris Patterson loved dressing her classmates for Christmas. She and her giggle and her giggling face had cut out paper snowflakes and Christmas trees, snowmen and Santas from brightly colored construction paper, then decorated them with the glitter and cotton and yarn. She brought in a four foot artificial tree to a door with popcorn and in um and ooh and fried cranberry strands, gingerbread man, and candy cane. Her students chattered loudly at their words until the room reached a grand of dim with the anticipation of Christmas. Doris always had her students prepare a Christmas wish list the things they wanted for Santa to bring them. But this year, she had broken that with, um, with Tradition. She knew what Nathan would wish for, and she couldn't stand ask him to stand up in front of the classmates to say out loud what he wanted to so badly. She knew that Nathan would give all the toys he had ever received at Christmas if his mother could get just get better. This year, Doris had asked her students to. Um, focus on their favorite Christmas memory, and to write them, uh, um, a, um, write them into a story. She hoped the assignment would help Nathan concentrate on the happy time he would share with his mother instead of the time that would never be. When Nathan's father told how sick Maggie, her how sick Maggie was, Doris volunteered to drive the boy. Uh, home from school each day. With all the stops um, it made, the school bus what took 45 minutes to bring him to his driveway and stop, stop Bobby. And she could get there, there and that's 15. I can do that, Mr. Patterson, Ms. Patterson, Jack said. I can't do that, Ms. I can't have you do that, Miss Patterson, Jack said. Uh, <coughs> Dora insisted. She remembered how, how she would have given anything for a few more minutes, moments with her mother. Other teachers felt Doris was being the call of duty, but driving five extra miles a day meant a little boy could spend 30 extra minutes with his mother. She would more gladly, uh, uh, more, more than gladly make the trip. The car ride was usually quiet. Doris didn't feel forced conversation, although she often wondered what the child was thinking after about. Perhaps his thoughts were so weren't sorrowful at all. But instead, some of his mother's miraculously healing healed. Doris had the same dreams when she was when she was young that God would simply touch her mother and destroy the disease that had that had victimlessly eaten away at her. Yet there were times she knew that miracles didn't happen, that people didn't recover. Sometimes they never did. In the Silence of the car rides. Doris would pray for her small passenger, for peace, for help, for comfort. Nathan <laughs> slammed her teeth. <laughs> uh, and ran up to his gravel drive <laughs> to his own. And the beginnings of a snowman stood in the yard. What, but whatever, who, whoever started it had 
had quit, leaving a single large ball with stick arms and pine cone eyes in a set of bottle for no, Neither the driveway nor the sidewalks had been had been shoveled. Footpaths were beaten down with in the snow. Today, Nathan and his mother were going to make Santa cookies for relatives and neighbors. Each year, they worked hours on the cookies, decorating them just right with food coloring and silver sugar balls before wrapping them and presenting them as gifts. He ran to the front door to find his grandma, Evelyn, Evelyn preparing the butter and the eggs and mixing bowls they were going to use. His mother lay propped on the hospital bed in the living room, smiling as he threw open the door. Are they we making them? He shouted. We're making them, my giraffe. We've just ma- been waiting for you. Well, come on, he said, tugging the sleeve of his back from her back leg. I'm watching Rachel right now, she said, indicating the playpen. But I'll help in a minute. Maggie's fe- eyes filled with tears as she watched Nathan jump into the kitchen. She wasn't strong enough to help in a minute. Both she and her mother Evelyn had moved to the previous Thursday, the same day Sylvia had visit, visited hospice nurse, nurse. Arrived in Wolf, the medical supply store, delivered the hospital bed. Evelyn had been coming in every day, but Jack, after she could stay around at the clock, explained that Maggie no longer had the energy to take care of Rachel. Evelyn was an active 60-year-old woman, widow, and the death of her husband four years earlier was easier for her to deal with than the impending death of her youngest son. It wasn't supposed to be this way. Parents were supposed to go for it. It was the logical progression of life. Sometimes, when Evelyn was alone in the shower or in the car, she would weep until she, she was certain her heart would burst. She wept for her grandchildren, for Jack, for her beautiful daughter, and for the ache that was growing sharper with each passing day. Maggie listened as her mother cracked the eggs into the cookie barrel, each flourish producing a giggle from her son. Maggie lo- loved to hear him laugh. Nathan had grown quiet during the last few months, though, though they uh, hadn't yet told him of the severity of her illness. Evelyn craned her neck <coughs> and winked at Ma- Maggie. Then dabbed the edge of Nathan- Nathan's nose with gooey con- concentration, causing a belly laugh to shook his small frame from head to toe. Rachel sketched herself, um, stretched herself to see over the playpen and laughed with delight. Maggie struggled to sit up, listening as her mother and Nathan cut out each cookie, each cookie with precision. These were the last smells of Christmas. The last. Stop. Oh my God, did you stop it? No. <sighs> the last smiles of her little boy at the last wheels of a baby girl that she would stop ever experience. She didn't want to connect uh, uh, down, down, down. She didn't want um, to com- 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 commit them to memory, but rather she wanted to be fully present in the here and now and love with all her soul. Stop. 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 Stop.